Welcome to the El Paso Shelter, a haven for migrants seeking safety and hope. This documentary shares the story of those who dedicate their lives to helping the most vulnerable. Meet our volunteers whose compassion and dedication light up the lives of migrants at the El Paso Shelter. My name is Felipe Salinas. My name is Javier Roman. My, my name is Ignacio Gomez, Jr. My name is uh, Ray Aguilar. I'm... You need to talk to them, you know, to actually understand why you take the risk, your own, almost putting your own life in the line, seeking for a better opportunities and a better way to live. This small church contributes a lot for the well-being of those individuals coming. Migration is a journey filled with peril and uncertainty. Our volunteers provide not just shelter, but a listening ear and a comforting presence. We learn, you know, how cruel a human being can be against another human being through their stories, through their, uh, their side of that journey that they've been, uh, a lot of them start the journey almost three, four, five years before they can reach the, the border. What I would like to say more than anything is to invite people to read about what migration is, the situations that those countries are living right now to force people to leave their own houses, to leave their own country, looking for a better life, not only for them, but for their families. Because as a family member or as a parent, we always gonna look what is best for our family. And if we have to cross halfway the world, we're going to do it. Even if you are exposing your whole family to the dangers that you expose them. So just imagine how bad could be the situation to make you take, make a, take a decision to cross the ocean, to cross the jungle, to cross seven countries to get to the border just with a hope for a better life. And I invite people to understand that, to research on that. Don't go by what the newspapers or what other people tell you or no. Take initiative from yourself so you can understand what these people go through. Daily life at El Paso Shelter is about more than just providing basic needs. It's about building a community and offering emotional support. Logistically, this parish is set up where uh, we're right next to the border. Literally, you walk across the border and, and the, the first place there is is a church. It's the, only, the first building that you see. Uh, so logistically the church uh, plays a big role and they, they use us as, here at the parish as a transition place for, for the migrants. People ask me, well, why do you go if they don't pay you? Well, they might not pay me money-wise, but I, I receive a lot of good blessings from our Lord and prayers from Father Peter, which uh, this last time my wife was uh, diagnosed with cancer, the first person to call my house was Father Peter. And the first, yes, I'm gonna start praying for her. I'm gonna start praying for her. So, uh, and she's doing well, she's doing well. That's my pay, that's my pay that I receive. And uh, Father Pachano, Father Ron, every day that I see him, the first question is, how's Annie? I'm praying for her. And that's my pay. That's that's um, that's my pay. That that's so true. My that brings me yeah. back. Yeah. It brings me back and bring or tell Father Peter what do you need? Do you need anything else? That's that's uh, that's my pay. Despite facing numerous obstacles, both migrants and volunteers show remarkable resilience. This church itself is by volunteers only, not by paid employees. All volunteers. That shows you the faithful parishioner, faithful parishioners. We only have one 
part-time one part-time secretary yeah. that's it that's it we, we don't like other parishes here in town they have cooks maintenance they have been uh, uh, bookkeepers uh, uh, administrators even administrators administrators even administrators here we have one secretary part-time the rest of the work is done maintenance Volunteer. finances is all volunteer I intend to be buried between the two trees. <laughs> Father Peter won't allow me, but I'm with. <laughs> you'll never know. I'm gonna be buried between those two trees. <laughs> between those two trees. But uh, no, no, this church is gonna be here for a while. It's, it's, it's got too much history. Too much. Too much history. Too much. At El Paso Shelter, lasting relationships are formed. Volunteers and migrants share bonds that transcend cultural and language barriers, fostering mutual respect and understanding. With the migrant uh, program that uh, Father Precourt and his team have implemented here, uh, the Knights essentially set up the hall. So we, we did all the staging. We cleaned up the hall. We put everything away that was not needed. We set up the cots and, and uh, configure the hall for them to receive the migrants. One of our nights, uh, one of my nights from my council is actually the program manager for uh, the migrant program. So, and we've solicited uh, assistance from the individual members of the council. So we have probably about four to five nights that at different times will go ahead and contribute and help uh, with the program here. Uh, most recently, we had the state delegation. Our state deputy came down. So he's the senior knight in the whole state of Texas. He came down with his program director. So I capitalized on that opportunity to uh, bring him down, give him a, uh, had Father Precourt give him a tour and explain the challenges that the program is facing and, uh, and explain the process. So he was, uh, pretty interested and concerned. Uh, so the desired outcome of that is we hope that the state deputy and the chapter, which is the diocesan level of the Knights here, we have about 33 councils in all of El Paso. But our, our goal, desired uh, outcome is to get some donations made charitable donations from the chapter and uh, also from the state. So, but made directly to this mission here. So, uh, that's what we hope will happen. The impact of El Paso Shelter extends beyond its walls. It fosters empathy and awareness, encouraging the community to stand in solidarity with migrants. That's another great thing that the Knights does. Yeah. And I know very recently the Knights of Columbus at the Supreme level, they made a substantial donation to the Diocese of El Paso for the migrant program. Mm -hmm. So it was cash and then also goods and services. So your phone call rang during the interview and I said, oh, this is a volunteer. I'm gonna answer it right in the interview. So, he, I am delighted to think that you would want to provide some clothing, whatever you have. Um, yes. We especially need uh, children's clothing and teenagers' clothing, but we would take um, women's clothing, men, uh, especially for the winter. Thank uh, you for joining us on this journey. The El Paso Shelter stands as a testament to the power of compassion and the human spirit. Our work is truly the work of God, and it is only possible with the support of generous people like you. We need your help to continue supporting the migrants, and your donations can make a significant difference. Together, we can make a difference and bring hope to those in need.